didn't know that Jesus was a recipe Cause he came and he saved me from the days in the streets Taking me to a better place where So thank you everybody and welcome to the Victorious Records Podcast This is episode number two and I have here with me Julie Jules, welcome what's to the up, podcast What's up, <laughs> Man, I've been so excited We just met like a month yes. ago But it's been a real blessing to know For you sure. You're one of the artists here under Victorious Records and uh, we're just putting this together with our brother Larry and with uh, some of the other amazing artists and like he says ministers of the gospel we're not just rappers we're not just producers we are ministers of the good news right and so one of the things that we are in the habit of doing here at Victoria's Records is to is to have Bible studies because this is not just about being the next big thing this is about worshiping the great big God and so the way that we do that is by first getting into the word. So how about if we yeah, do that? that I love, cool? though, that we do always do that because yeah. we're it says seek the kingdom first, you know, and all righteousness and all will be added on. So every yep. time we do it, he adds on to us. So that's it. Praise the Lord. I love that. So today is October 28. They call this uh, whatever uh, Halloween week, but we're going to call it Holy Week. Holy Week. Yeah. Even though we know Easter is the official one, but this is holy because Jesus is holy. So October 28, uh, I want to pray once again, and then let's get into the word just for a bit. God, I want to thank you again for your word and your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for your presence, and may now everything that we say and do, may it glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Okay, so it says, do not expect to be treated fairly in this life. Oh, already, hmm. huh? Let's go. Do not expect to be treated fairly. Talk about right, it. Right, Julie? What's going on here? Is this, oh, is this the Holy Spirit already? We just might be talking about that, but <laughs> see, maybe we come can just on, stay Lord, with that, have right? your way. <laughs> People will say and do hurtful things to you, things that you don't deserve. Mm. When someone mistreats you, try to view it as an opportunity to grow in grace. See how quickly you can forgive the one who has wounded you. Don't be concerned about setting the record straight. Instead of obsessing about other people's opinions of you, keep your focus on me. Ultimately, it is my view of you that counts. As you concentrate on relating to me, remember that I have clothed you in my righteousness and holiness. I, set, I see you attired in these radiant garments, which I bought for you with my blood. This also is not fair. It is a pure gift. When others treat you unfairly, remember that my ways with you are much better than fair. My ways are peace and love, which I have poured out into your heart by my spirit. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3 says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And then Isaiah 61 verse 10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Just a few thoughts on that, my dear family and friends of the Victorious Records podcast. When we think about unfairness and being treated unfairly, first we have to say that that is the plan of the enemy. The enemy, the, uh, the, the enemy of our souls, he wants to destroy God's plans in your life and he will use unfair situations or unfair results in your family in your circumstances to destroy his it. purpose in your life God's purpose and so when those things happen you have to go beyond what you see in the natural we want justice we want that person to suffer we want that person to to get what they deserve and in, and in some ways there is justice of course and, and of course we know that God, God's justice is perfect. But you have to surrender that justice because the more that you put that justice on your lap, it'll only destroy your purpose. Mm. The more that you seek justice on your own and on your own terms, the more it will destroy your anointing. The anointing of God only works through holiness, only works through surrender, only works mm. through peace. And so when you and I surrender that unrighteousness or that injustice done to you even though it may take time you will flow in the spirit's anointing and you will see love and peace like he says here flow through you mm -hmm. but when you and i hold on to that injustice we're actually taking the place of god 
And we can do that. Justice, that's why the Bible says, belongs to the Lord. Vengeance, it says, belongs to God. So when you and I take justice into your own hands, we're basically anti-Christ. We are becoming the opposite of what Christ wants us to do. He wants us to surrender that to Christ, and yet we're saying, no, I can do it. He wants us to give him the authority to do justice in this world, but we're saying, no, I got it. So we're actually taking basically the devil's side in that situation. We're basically siding with the devil when we take justice into our own hands and we see it everywhere. And so when we take justice into our own hands, that's why it destroys us. That's why we can't sleep at night. And guess what? That's why we can never get justice. And you'll hear people say, I can't find justice in this world. Yeah, for You'll sure. be like, man, there's no justice in this world. Yes, because you've taken that which belongs to Jesus into your own lap. You're basically stealing God's righteousness and making it your own. You're mm -hmm. trying to be in the place of God. You are working on the devil's side. Instead, God says, give me your, your burdens. It says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says in Matthew 6, do not be anxious, but with, but with prayer and supplication, present your request to me. And, and the God of the surpassing understanding will fill your hearts and mind with Christ Jesus. So you and I face injustices every day at work, relationships, school, on the streets, on the mm -hmm. road. Learn to surrender that injustice to God. Learn to let him take care of all the details. Learn to take, let him take control of the injustices in your life. Now you might say, well, I can't do that. I mean, the guy ran into my car or they kicked me out of that job or mm. they offended me and they said something mean at the DMV or at the store, right? And yes, the flesh yeah. is always going to fight against the spirit. The flesh is always going to say, take matters into your own hands. Let them Square have up. it. And we've all done it. And every time that we do that, it doesn't go well. There's only more destruction, more anger, more frustration. You lose the money, you lose the case, you lose everything. And most of all, you lose your peace. Even if you win the temporal, you lose the eternal. That's why the Bible says it is better. What's the point of, of gaining the whole world and yet losing your soul? So when you have an injustice done to you, my dear family, surrender it to Jesus. Even when you go to the courtroom, surrender that to Jesus. Even when you go to the DMV, surrender it to Christ. Even when you have to sign a, a, some paperwork that you think this is not right, surrender it to God. I'm not saying let people walk all over you. I'm saying let Jesus walk before you. Walk ah. with the Spirit. That's why Galatians 5 says to walk in the Spirit. You're going to the courtroom, walk with Jesus. You're going to go and call or text someone back. Before you send that email, walk with the Spirit. Say, Lord, what would you That's do? So good. How would you write this email? How would you speak to my mom? Maybe sometimes it's a family, right? It's our own family. Talk about it, Pastor. It's sometimes it's our own family that yeah. are the culprits of injustice. And guess what happens when we want to have justice with our family? Hell breaks loose. Chaos, anger, frustration, division. Now you're on the streets. Now you're mad at your mom. Now you're crying alone at, you know, at night because you, you, you feel desperate. Instead, swallow your pride and give your pride over to Jesus. Say, mm -hmm. Lord, I need you to be my victory. I, that's why Psalm 3 says, Lord, you are my glory. David, the king of Israel, the most glorious king of Israel that's, that they've ever had, he said, Lord, you are my glory and the lifter of my head. When you and I seek glory, justice, power, we're going to burn. We're going to destroy ourselves and others. Instead, say, Lord, you are my glory. I give you my rights. I give you my justice. I give you the injustice. We were talking earlier, Julie, that how we both have had experiences where yeah. we feel like we have to fight for our rights. I, can't, I, I come from a country, as I said, that a lot of injustices. And my father, a man of God and a pastor, I saw him protest on the streets. And I've done the same thing. But there's also a line that sometimes I think, I think I just crossed the line. <laughs> Maybe I spoke in anger more than in justice. Mm. And so we have to be conscious of where is that line. You know who tells you where that line is? The Holy Spirit. Yep. You know how we know where that line is? By surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Now, Julie, turning to you a little bit in this topic, have you ever faced an injustice in your life and how have you let the Holy Spirit take control? You know, every day we wake up and, mm. and you know, we're, we're at war because the Bible even shows us and even says, you know, Jesus got prosecuted. Mm. They Everything they did to him. So every day we wake up, 
we're already we're already you know like oh who's gonna who's gonna try me today but every day when i wake up and i'm really like man okay jesus remind me that i'm i'm my goal is to be more like you the way they treated you the way they spat on you the way they prosecuted you people are going to be showing injustice to us also because being walking with jesus and and laying your life down and picking up that cross and it's not ever something that is normalized nowadays what's normalized is going out causing all kinds of craziness you know living in a sinful nature so every day there's some type of injustice and it's not even our skin color it's our beliefs it's what's in our side of our hearts so i deal with it just reminding myself i gotta be more like jesus you know yeah and i gotta remember like i gotta even though sometimes i may forget that i'm not hood i'm holy now but you know sometimes <laughs> i just gotta really be like god like like I got to die to myself. Every day we got to die to ourselves. You got to starve that flesh because mm. how selfish of me to try to take control when God's really like, yo, like I'm right here. Like, yeah. give me that. And I'm like, no, 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 God. Like, no, no, no. Let me deal with it. And every time I did that, I didn't win. Yeah. And when I just really gave everything and died to myself, I was like, okay, I could, I could do this more often. I can give you my problems, Lord, because it's so much easier. <laughs> so going back to when I was um, about 12, 13, I began writing, like just writing how I felt, writing um, what really I was feeling inside. And I remember when I really realized, like, oh, dang, I think I can write because I wrote my mom a song for her birthday. And when I wrote it, it was like more of a freestyle. And I was just, I was like, oh, hold on. I got to write that down because that sounded really good. But it was the truth that I was speaking. What I wrote in that song was real life events that happened. And, you know, I, I was like, okay, God, you know. But at that time, I didn't know I had a calling. I didn't know it was a gift. So time went on. And I literally have notebooks to notebooks of just things written down. And I want to say last year, um a friend a friend of mine was like hey like i have a friend who has a studio and i love to sing but i i didn't think my voice could you know be put out there because i was always the first one on karaoke like give me the mic <laughs> but but i know that i don't have a you know a nice angel voice but hey god could use the unlikely voices so voice. thank you praise yes. the lord i'll glory to god for that practice makes perfect that's something my mom always said so i'd always practice i'd be in my room and um so my friend told me like because i i started writing poetry i started using that like okay god i don't know how to sing but we'll use it for poetry and as i was going about it my friend was like hey like you know you could write a song with that and i was like me like you're talking to me like a song i don't know i don't know you're wrong friend over here and little did i know i went into the studio we literally did two maybe three takes the third take was just because i had to fix one thing and we laid a song within two hours and it was just and I remember going in, I had a paper in my hand and God was like, throw that paper. And I literally, Pastor, I'm telling you, I literally just threw the paper and the producer was like, what are you doing? And I was like, just just play the track. And I just flowed and I was like, God, like what? Like, you know, and, and it just came where I was like, okay, God, if this is what you want me to do, like allow me to continue. But see, I wasn't seeking his will. I was seeking my own. I was like, God, I want to get this done. I want this song out. And I wasn't working with the right people. So I finally was like, I'm going to take a pause. God, whoever you want me to work with, allow them to come find me. Allow them to come because I, you know, I don't need to go seeking after. As long as I seek your face, the, what the blessing is going to seek me. Always. So so I was like, all right, Lord. And then that's when, you know, Brother Larry had seen me uh, freestyling. And I started, that's what I started doing. God was like, I literally out of nowhere just got the urge to post freestyles. And I was like god like that's Just that's embarrassing yeah, yeah i was i was honestly very embarrassed but i had to humble myself before the lord and i said god if this is your will it's gonna impact someone it's gonna touch somebody and ministering through that freestyle and and i seen people's reaction and i was like oh dang god like this okay like you know it and if it comes from the lord you're gonna see the fruit of it oh, and if not you're gonna see rotten fruit and it was good oh, look at some tasty fruit <laughs> so i was like all right lord like that's what we're gonna do so that's when i started praying like god if you want me to pursue this music journey you know speaking your word through music send me the right people and then here we are today a couple <laughs> months later you know praise the lord God has been faithful yes 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 and i love how like the way we all met is mm. through victory outreach through Bio. Bio, <laughs> Chino, Bio, Chino, yes Bio, Shout out come on to victory outreach friends and family and how god has brought us together uh 
maybe we'll do my story one of these days. But I met Larry also just a few months ago. Shout out to Water Walker out there. Yee. We love our friend and how he's brought us together. And here For we are sure. recording here in the Victorious Records studios. And we're putting out tracks every week, every month. We have three or four different artists already yeah. working together here. And we have Bible studies because our foundation is to minister Amen. to, for to the sure. Lord. Amen, for sure, for sure. to bring uh, light to people that need it. Now, speaking of light and darkness, mm. we were talking about injustice and the devil earlier and how he destroys our plans. Yeah. Tell us about kind of a, something that happened in your life just recently mm. that we were talking about that could have really derailed the plans of God, but you hung on to him. Tell us, what did you learn from that experience? Um, so recently I, I was in a car accident and I've been in a car accident before. No, they were not my fault. Okay. I'm a, yeah, yeah. I know I drive yeah, crazy, yeah. but, but my car is anointed That's and blessed, right. you know? Right. Um, but see that th this car accident was just different. It was very, it was crazy. Cause I was, I was driving to work and I was putting my worship music and I was like praising the Lord. And out of nowhere, this car just comes and literally like decks me and pushes me into an Island where I'm telling you, Pastor, like, I've never been gripped with fear like that because as I was hitting the island, there was cars coming, like, towards my way. I was like, God, if I go over this island, like, that's it, you know? And, and it, I've never had the, like, so, been, been so scared where I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to die. Like, literally that type of fear. But then I was like, wait, wait. Like, literally, it happened so fast. And, and I looked at the car that trying to you know get their license plate but when i looked at it i just felt the wickedness i felt the the demonic force that came from that trying to take me out and i got out the car and i ended up hitting somebody due to him hitting me but i got out the car and i looked at my car and i was like god that's all that happened to my car you know some people would be like oh my god my car got scratched and i'm like no the way i got impacted my car my oh, right side should have been you know like the the yeah. the bumper coming off hanging yeah. dragging but right. you know god's hand when his hand is upon oh, something Jesus. his hand is powerful Amen. and and i got out the car and you know i was like I first told myself everything happens for a reason. Every every test is a testimony, and I yes. always say that because I strongly believe that because I've experienced every single test is now my living testimony, right. and you know, the old me probably would have been mad like God, why did you let this happen? Why is it this and that? But I was like, okay, I'm not going into work today. God, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> like, let's go and and um. I've been wanting to go on the bus for the longest time. So I, my car wasn't drivable. I, I parked it somewhere and and God led me, you know. I was like, I'm going to go get myself a water. I'm going to just go vibe out with the Lord. Have me a nice, you know. Right. Who can say, hey, I went on the bus today. I went to Starbucks today and just enjoyed. Everyone's always like, oh, I had work. I had this and that. So I was like, Lord, let's, let's allow today to be different. And I, I met a guy and I, the Lord just led me to speak to him. And we we're talking for like maybe 20 minutes and we we're just both on fire, like talking about the Lord. And I was like, Jesus, like this is you. This is orchestrated. This is a divine appointment. And and then I tend to think like, and he was a security guard. And I'm like, you know, he's a security guard, but I don't know what he was going through. Like he could have been like wanting to take his life after work. And I was like, you know, if I, my accident is what, what saved him. I like, praise the Lord. Like I'll take a hit any day. But but during that, I really learned, like, God really is just so faithful because I did not doubt. I, and I had to learn how to stop doubting. And, and God had to water my faith, you know. Um, like I was telling you earlier, sometimes we put ministry first and God second. And God had to really show me, like, no, no, like, you have to remember I'm first. I'm like, okay, Lord, show me the way. But but that whole day, even in the bus, I was like, thank you, God. I, I just wanted to add something, you know, how you talk about, you said something in the beginning, you know. And, and I just want to encourage you guys that when you decide to lay your life down for Christ, you need to lock certain people. You need to let go of the past. And, and the word even talks about... As a dog returns to its vomit, so is a fool that repeats its fully. And that is something that I had to learn. There was people I did not want to let go of. I was like, God, but I love them. Like, all these memories we have, these, these, all this, you know, that Sweet. I thought. And it's an, a, a soul tie, really. Yes. It's, yes. And, you know, the, the battle is not between flesh and blood, but it's against the darkness, Power the prince of, yeah, against darkness that, that rule the. Yes, 
And because of that, I had to learn like, dang, these demonic forces just don't want me to let go of this person. And and I finally and praying for the spirit of discernment, I was like, okay, God, like I want to walk in your will. I whatever you whatever freeway you want me to take on, I'll get in the car. Let's go. Like, let's do it. So I was like, whoever needs to get off of my lane, go the other way, even if I have to ride that carpool lane alone. And I okay, so. I hope there's any cop watching me. Don't follow me. But (laughs) so sometimes, you know, a girl just has to take carpool. Like we just in a rush. We got to get to church. But I'm like, man, when? Oh, my God. I don't want to jinx myself. But I'm saying like, I feel like I'm going to get away with the ticket because I'm like, Jesus is with me. And And he is, you know, so I had to realize like. It may look like no one's in the car with me, but I got Jesus, I got the Holy Spirit, and I got the King of Kings with me. Like, nothing nothing is going to stop me no more. So I was like, God, what do you want me to do? Give me that spirit of discernment. And some people would text me or call me, and my spirit would get disturbed. I'm like, no, we don't need that. Sorry, got to block you. And and it was a challenge. There's this one specific person that I'd always block and unblock and on. It was just so toxic, but... God was like, that inconsistency is not going to work for me. And, you know, I always say God keeps it G because he keeps it real. You know, and, you know, my, my, all my brothers out there, you know. The, the So I just really, I had to learn that God does keep it G. And, and he wants me to get to the destination. But I have to trust that he is my guide, that the word is my guide. So if there's someone out there that is hindering the calling upon your life, they may claim that they love you. They may say, I'm just checking up on you. They may say, how are you? I was thinking about Bring you. Flowers. You need, yeah, Bring dude. Flowers. And you'll be like, oh my God, they changed. Oh my God, they changed. They God is me. not going to take you back to the to the person the you box. prayed out of. Bring yeah, like, and that's what I had to really realize. Like, God, I'm not a dog. I'm not a dog. Yeah, like, dog. yeah, yeah like I'm not, I'm God. not going back to my vomit. Like yeah. how gross that is disgusting. And, and I would always also pray like, God, if this mm. person is not for me, show me. Just encouraging you, you know, like, Really let go of that person because the enemy will and so and even says the enemy does not always comes and in horns and gush blood and you know sometimes he comes wow, lucky yeah. yeah he comes with the suit and tie ready to do business and oh, get yeah. you out of your oh, business yeah. he he takes Ideas, you out man. yeah that you know red, red lipstick what oh, I mean uh, but oh, yeah. but you know red so red so red it's red. it's just really like mm-hmm. having that discernment and being obedient yeah. obedience is key yeah. and as soon as i block this person you know and Amen. and god even because i was like god like you know how i care and you know how much i love this person but mm-hmm. god was like do you not know that is my child you don't think i care for that child as much as you mm-hmm. do all you need to do is trust me and pray about it and you will see you will see the glory and sometimes he needs to detach us because we're mm-hmm. both hindering each other we're the flesh is yeah, still Jesus. there though those feelings are still there that attachment is still there and god needs to break in order to get a breakthrough he needs to break certain that's things right. and just mm-hmm. just be obedient to god honestly yeah. that's that's all i can say i you know, and that topic is so relevant I coach many young adults as part of one of you, okay? I spill water. Oh, no you could leave that in there. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone knows me, you know I'm clumsy. Yeah. So I want to add to that that I always say, you know, you could have the, the nicest car, you know, in the world, the car you always wanted. But without gas, it's not going anywhere. When you're not filled up with the Lord, you could have the nicest clothes on. You could have the nicest jewelry on. It could be real jewelry for all, you know, <laughs> but... But when you're fueled up with the Lord, you give gas to other people without noticing it, you know, and it's free. It's contagious. His love is contagious. His joy is contagious. And I speak that from experience because I see people fired up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to get fired up like that. Like we need to be, you know, we need to be there because we have to be radical. We have to understand that whether we see it or we don't, people are watching us. People are watching us. And and the word even says that our eye is a lamp to our body. Mm -hmm. So if I see somebody who's down and sad, I'm like, oh, man, okay, now I'm sad. I'm like, no, no, let let, let me go help you. Let me go. Let me give you some words real quick to fire you up. So sometimes we got to put gas in our car. We got to put gas into our spirit. And the gas of the Lord, we need that, you know, that expensive gas of the Lord, you know, the unconditional, that right? Like, what is it? The Supreme, supreme. you know, you got to take from the fire. Don't let it, don't let it discourage you, but receive that. Like, like, Lord, I'm going through the fire. Let me take some fire and let me put some right here in my prayer time. Let me put some fire right here in my worship time and my praise time. And you just scatter that fire around. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
So I wanted to wrap up just yeah. with um, talking about your music, Julie, and talking about Victorious Records and just kind of what do you see God doing in your life in the next, let's say, couple of weeks? What, what are the things that um, maybe the themes of lyrics that God's giving you these days? Honestly, I, I personally feel that God is calling me to just be open. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll have, you know, I'll, I'll be in a mood to write. And the other times my, my heart is just so closed yeah, off. It feels right. like a brick. Yeah. But I'm like, no, this is my writing time. Like, God, I got to feel. And, and just being real, being genuine and understanding mm -hmm. that. And someone even told me, too, that. I don't need any other validation except from heaven. I don't need anyone else's Ooh, okay Lord. or anyone else's validation. If, as long as it comes from God, as long as it comes from heaven, that's all that matters. So somebody might think like, oh, your music's whack or this and that. But heaven's over here rejoicing, you know, <laughs> like, you Amen. know, so so I, you, I'm really putting that into play that mm. allowing him to lead me. So mm. I can't specifically say like, oh, this is what this is that. But no, it's like, you know, one day I might be working on a rap, but then the next God leads me to a worship song and, right. and, and and just being willing, being prepared. Mm. I just got mm. done reading the book of Timothy and, and <laughs> you know, Paul tells Timothy, like, yeah. be ready in and out of season. That's so right. I got to be ready. I'll even be driving and I'll be writing things That's down. Right. I'll be at work and I'll be writing things down and, yeah. and just be ready because you don't i never know that one line that i wrote down at work mm. could be that line that brings someone to salvation Woo. amen amen that's exactly right so we want to just invite you as we wrap up here our second episode of the victoria's mm. records podcast to uh, this ministry of god we are a ministry and uh, specifically what we do is like you're seeing we mentor we read the scriptures and then we record release and prophesy we, we are here to do basically everything from the life of the artist and to encourage each other to stay in the word and then to record and then to minister. Amen. And so Julie and Water Walker and a lot of the other guys, shout out to all of our different artists that are with us. We invite you to come and be a part of this movement. And if you're in the LA area, obviously we are local, but even if you're not here, we can always do it through Dropbox. We can do voice memos. We, might, we just might be traveling we from might nation be traveling. to nation. Come I don't know. Florida, prophesy. Come on. The name of Jesus. We claim that we and bring, it's so possible, absolutely. you know. But we want to invite you if you are a, a musician, an artist, or if you want us to come and minister at your church, your youth group, an outreach, uh, if you want to have a special show, a concert, a night of ministry and prayer and deliverance, we're here to serve. And if you are an artist and you're looking for a place of encouragement, maybe your flow isn't quite where it was. Maybe you need new, new beats. Maybe you need someone to play uh, piano. <laughs> We're here to serve. We're here to do all that for you. And uh, you can just check out all of the links at the bottom of this video so you can see kind of what we do in pictures. Uh, where can we find you, Julie? At West Coast Content. I want to say there's an underscore. Right. But when you put up West Coast Content. Um... And lastly, I want to pray. I want to pray for you as a young person, as a man, a woman of God who is maybe struggling with your calling or maybe you, you know your calling, but you don't know what, what to do next. So I want to pray healing over your life and your family, your circumstances, that God would deliver you. And second, if you do not know Jesus, if you've maybe been involved in other things of this world, religions, drugs, relationships, we want to bring salvation and, and Jesus will bring peace into your, into your home, into your life. So I want to pray for those two things. Let's pray together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you and glorify your name, God. I want to thank you for this beautiful day and for your glory, your presence that's been with us. God, we know that there are many people, God, that will be listening to this that may be having questions and doubts. Maybe they don't know what your, their calling is. And so we want to pray for deliverance from any attacks of the devil in Jesus' name. Lord, anything that is distracting young people, people of any color, any age, God, we pray against it in the, in the power of Jesus' name. That you will deliver those, God, that are called and ready, and yet the devil's coming against him. Illness, sickness, financial problems problems in, in car accidents, problems at the DMV, problems in legal areas, problems at a home with her parents. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we claim and proclaim victory over their lives. We pray for healing also spiritually and mentally as well as physically. God, any illness, anything with this virus, anything with any other disease, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for clarity, for peace, for our families, for our loved ones, for our parents, for siblings, Lord, for our, our kids, if we have kids, for anyone, Lord, in our lives. Lord, and second, I want to pray for salvation. I want to pray 
God, that someone who's listening to our voices would say these words after me, the prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you into, in, 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 this, in this moment. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to now follow you the rest of my days in Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed a simple prayer, my dear friend, you are now born again. You're now a child of God, and we want to bless you, Lord. And we want to say welcome to the family of God. You are now a new creation in Jesus' name. Amen. Any last words, Julie, before we go? Just keep seeking the kingdom of God first. Keep seeking him and, and his righteousness and all will be added on to you. Amen. And I always say I am a living testimony mm. because, you know, days I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have been here, but right. I'm here. And even doing this podcast, I, God is answering my prayers because Lord knows I've <laughs> right. always wanted to be in, not just be in a podcast, but start a podcast. And this is what we're doing with, with our ministry. We're ministering yep. through music and, yep. and just, don't give up. Never Do not grow up. weary for in due season you will reap a harvest yeah, and, glory, and right. enjoy the road with the Lord. It's wow. worth it. It's worth Amen. it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Julie. Yes, thank you. And uh, as I said, you know, we're all here co-laborers in Christ. We're all partners of this amazing ministry. Amen. We also want to encourage you, if you want to support financially, go to buymeacoffee.com slash David Trigg. For now, it's just that. We'll eventually change it over to Victorious Records. But if you would like to support us $5 a month, 7 or 20 go to that website. You will get exclusive content, these podcasts, more behind the scenes stuff, other podcasts. Julie's going to start her own. I'm sure we're going to have more tracks and you're going to be first in line to receive all of the, yeah. the pictures and publicity and, and logos and things before everyone else gets it. Mm. So go to buymeacoffee.com slash David Trigg for now so you can sign up and you can become a member on a monthly basis or you can sign up for a whole year and support this ministry so we can get the computers and all the gear that we need to go and minister to uh, people in need. Thank you again for being here and we will see you next time. God bless you. Bye. Taking me to a better place where I can be in peace and I can sit in this victory. Man, I gotta thank you, Lord. All the times I was down in the dark, you came and shined your light. Took me from the pain.